Hello YouTubers. Well, telling it all 55. At least I think it's 55. But it's nice to get back to doing, um, well, what I am better known for doing rather than all this other stuff that's been going on. And um, thinking about the subject matter, um, so many people, young people they will be, uh, ask me many times about World War Two. Well, I have previously told little tales about being a child in uh, World War Two, but I think what they really are hoping to hear is tales of battles and her heroism and things like that. Um, well, I obviously can't tell you that because I never experienced them, uh, but even those who did experience these um, horrific things whether it be in battle in foreign lands or or on the home front in air raids and death and destruction I don't think I don't think those people would want to recall those um, those rather unpleasant memories um, to push them to the back of their minds and get on with life so um, I'm sorry I cannot um, I cannot um, oblige you there but uh, when the war started I'd had just had my 12th birthday so I was a I was a young boy of 12 uh, thinking I was uh, 40 as we all do and uh, I thought uh, it was wonderful that the war had come I thought oh crikey yeah this is good I shall um, I shall I saw myself lying on the beach uh, hiding behind the sand dunes with a machine gun repelling the enemy and um, dead bodies all over the place but um, I think that's perfectly natural um, sort of thing for a child to uh, to think about but of course when the reality hit and uh, you found that the enemy had come over with aeroplanes and were bombing you and your life was in air raid shelters and you were feared for your life and the life of your friends uh, the reality was was quite different but one thing that has always been in my mind was although many experiences in the war were unpleasant with uh, the life that we had and the um, rationing and things like that um, and hardships it's always struck me that at that time the whole country um, was welded together in a common cause and we all behaved and were proud of our country we were respectful and proud of the politicians that were uh, leading our country and all of those sort of things seem to have disappeared now as we we all look to ourselves for a better life and um, so uh, although war is is a horrible thing um, it had some benefits in that way I think and um, uh, what a pity that um, we can't now have the same attitudes. When I was in America recently, um, it, it was very noticeable to me that um, the American flag was flown all over the buildings with, with, with pride. Here in England, I don't know whether there's any rules about it, but nobody flies the British flag we don't want to seem to declare that we are proud of our country the only time we seem to fly a flag is to support um, a football team or something if an England team is um, um, in some event then everybody will wave flags out of their cars and say we are we are British and we are proud of it but as a general rule it seems to me that there doesn't seem to be any great pride in our country and I think that's very sad and why is it that uh, we should have to have a common enemy or a disaster 
like say 9-11 or all the other things that happen um, to make us all work together instead of being individuals just looking out for ourselves all the time but anyway that's far too big a subject and uh, uh, something which I, I can't give an answer to but um, as I've said um, although war is a terrible thing or any sort of common disaster it does have some benefits I suppose and thinking about war of course um, very shortly on November the 11th will be a day when we remember uh, all of the people from all the wars who have fought on our behalf and um, commemorate them um, and think and think about them and uh, uh, just an interesting little fact um, somebody told me the other day um, why do we use the poppy as a symbol and um, of course that is because they proliferated and grew in large numbers in Flanders the site of a, a very horrific battle in World War One and um, I thought well why should poppies grow there and it appears that the poppy seed um, can hibernate if that's the right word for many many years but when the ground is disturbed as it was with all the bombs then they will they will germinate and so that is what they did and uh, in England after the First World War I think there was an association called the British Legion where uh, men who came from the war and had no jobs were helped and one of the things that they did was to make the uh, artificial poppies that were used in their millions at all of these celebrations so that's just a fact I throw in just because I know about it but um, thinking about the um, services that go on for us to remember people who died for us I came across the well-known poem which is called In Flanders Field and uh, it's a lovely poem and I'll just read a bit of it um, which says We are the dead Short days ago we lived Felt dawn, saw sunset glow Loved and were loved And now we lie in Flanders fields Take up our quarrel with the foe to you from failing hands we throw the torch be yours to hold it high if ye break faith with us who die we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields so I think that says it all and war there's never been a time when there's not a war going on somewhere in the world and what a sad world it is but um, I suppose I'll end on that sombre note. Um, um, I'm not a sombre person, as you, uh, as you know, and uh, look forward, not backwards. So to the young people who want to know all about war, yes, fine, I think it's wonderful that you should want to know about it and, and that you should research it and know how your country uh, has fought for the privileges that you you now enjoy and um, that's a very good thing but blood and gore keep it to the computer game and um, not in real life so I'd better go now so goodbye <laughs>